All right, in this podcast, we're going to talk about electrolytic cells. Okay, so an electrolytic cell is basically when we take a non-spontaneous or non-thermodynamically favored redox reaction and we force it to happen by hooking up some sort of power source, some sort of direct electrical current to our cell. Um, the electrodes for the cell are immersed in molten salt or in some sort of electrolytic solution. Um, and we still have oxidation at the anode and reduction at the cathode. All right, so just to reiterate, um, electrolytic cells are not favored to happen. They have a negative um, cell potential and a positive delta G. We must use a battery of some sort <clears throat> in order to force the redox reaction, the non-spontaneous one, to occur. So basically, we're, re we're uh, um, reversing a voltaic cell. So if you think of a voltaic cell as like the battery in your cell phone, um, the electrolytic cell is us charging, recharging that battery on your cell phone. And there are two really popular uses for um, electrolytic cells. One is salt splitting, where we're trying to electrolyze molten salts. And another is electroplating, where we can actually plate a specific metal on top of another one. All right, differences between voltaic or galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. So voltaic, we definitely, um, it's a spontaneous reaction. We have two separate half cells, and we're going to generate a current through our wire that we can use to power something. Uh, electrolytic, these are non-spontaneous. We must force them to happen through an external power source. And guess what? They only have one cell. All right, now similarities. Um, both use redox reactions. Uh, oxidations at the anode, reductions at the cathode, and electrons always flow from anode to cathode in both of them. All right, so first we're going to look at electrolysis of a molten salt. Molten salt basically means we have salt that is in um, its ionic form, so positive and negative ions that they have separated. It's no longer a crystal lattice. The positive ion is going to be reduced, and your negative ion is oxidized. Again, cathode still reduction, anode still oxidation. So if we took the case of molten NaCl, so basically I have Na pluses and Cl minuses running around in solution. My Na plus can gain an electron and become a sodium metal. So this is the um, reduction reaction. Okay, and then my Cl minus, it can become Cl2, which is um, chlorine gas, plus um, two electrons when we atom balance and then charge balance. So this is our oxidation. So in this cell, um, I should look to have sodium um, being produced and chlorine gas. Okay, so here is our, um, our model of the uh, molten NaCl electrolytic cell. You see that the Na pluses are coming in. They're being reduced. They're making um, sodium metal. And then my Cl minus ions, they are losing electrons and producing chlorine gas. All right, so... Um, you can also have an electrolytic cell where you have aqueous solutions or an electrolytic solution instead of a molten salt. Because water is going to be present in this aqueous, solu aqueous solution um, and an electric current is being applied to the cell, you also have to consider water in the process because water can also be um, reduced and oxidized. So... If you look, though, at the electrolysis, the overall electrolysis reaction for water, you see that it has a negative E cell, which means this is not a spontaneous process. This is why it's not a factor for us in our galvanic cells, okay? However, when you apply an electric current, 
you are forcing these non-spontaneous things to happen. So you have to consider the oxidation reduction of water when you're looking at an aqueous electrolytic cell. Okay, <clears throat> so how do we know what's going to get oxidized and what's going to get reduced in an electrolytic cell? You're going to do the exact same things, okay? So um, first off, understand you're going to have two um, possible reduction reactions and two possible oxidation reactions. So you're going to have whatever your ionic salt that's dissolved is um, that could potentially do reduction or oxidation. And then you also have water because it's dissolved in water, which could also be reduced or oxidized. So you have to compare the two equations for reduction and the two for oxidation. Um, so at the end of the day, the most positive reduction species is going to be used as the reduction. And then our most negative reduction species is going to be our oxidation. All right, so let's look at um, this calcium iodide, an aqueous solution electrolytic cell. Okay, so I've definitely got Ca2 pluses and I1 minuses in solution, and I have water. Okay, so I know for my reduction, um, my calcium could be reduced, and my water could also be reduced and to form hydrogen gas and hydroxide. So I want to pick the least negative or the most positive of the two of these. So that's definitely going to be water in this case. Okay, so this is what's occurring at my cathode. All right, now for the oxidation, I have to think about my I minus ion. Okay, it could um, lose two electrons and be reduced to the I2 solid. Or my water could be reduced into oxygen gas and some H plus ions. Okay, so when I look at these, um, I want the most negative, okay, least positive. So that's definitely going to be my I, okay. So it looks like this is going to be my anode and this is going to be my cathode. Okay, so looking at a bigger picture of this, Okay, again, here's my anode. Okay, so on my anode, the I minus ions are being taken out of solution, and I2 solid is being produced as um, electrons are removed. The electrons are flowing um, through this wire, and they are um, going over here to the cathode. The cathode is actually reducing the water itself into hydrogen gas. So we're letting off hydrogen gas, we're producing I2 solid, and we're making our solution more basic all at the same time. Okay, so let's look at this um, particular uh, example. Okay, so we have a direct current being applied to um, copper to bromide. So this is basically what we got going on in solution. Okay, so Definitely, copper is a candidate for reduction. Um, and then if we look for our reduction reaction, so here's our reduction reaction for water. Okay, so now i got to compare these two values. The most positive value is what's going to happen. So definitely, it's going to be my copper 2 plus is being reduced into copper solid. Okay, now oxidation... I'm going to change colors. We're going to look at the other ones. So water should have been over here, right? And then it would have been oxidation. And then I have Br- in solution. So if I flip this equation, then I'm giving off electrons. That is also um, going to be oxidation. So these are the two I need to compare. I don't have to change their signs or flip their signs or anything like that unless I need the E cell for them. But to just figure out who is oxidized, I go with the least positive of those numbers, which is going to be um, my Br2, okay? So, and you do need to flip it when you write the half reaction. So, 2Br minus makes Br2 plus 2 electrons, okay? All right, so if I wrote the overall reaction, I would get Cu2 plus plus 2Br minuses 
makes copper and bromine liquid. Okay, so we are asked to calculate delta G. So in order to do that, I do need to go back up here and look at my values. So copper was already good to go, so it was 0.34. I didn't have to flip it. I did have to flip my bromine, though, so that makes it negative 1.07 when I'm calculating. Um, and that gives me a value of negative 0.73. So there's my E cell. Okay. All right, now I'm going to erase a little bit here so we get a little room. Oops, I got the highlighter out instead of the eraser. Okay, here we go. All right, so there's my E cell value right there. All right, and now I need to um, apply my delta G equals negative N um, F E cell. Okay, so looking at electrons, okay, so I had two on my copper and two on my bromine, so it's going to be two. So negative two times Faraday's, which is 96,485, and then my negative 0.73. Okay, plug all that in, and I get my negative, I mean my delta G value to be positive um, 140,868 joules. Okay, um, when we're looking at this one, okay, it um, first off it says that for an electrolytic cell to operate, Al2O3 must be in liquid state rather than in solid state. Explain. In solid state, this is an ionic solid. In solid state, ionic solids do not conduct, which means if they do not conduct, they cannot be electrolytic. Okay? So they've either got to be liquid, so their positive negatives are shifting around everywhere, or they have to be dissolved, so in aqueous solution. Okay. Um, then we're told that aluminum is placed in a KOH solution, and the following reaction occurs down below, and we're asked to determine the, um, the uh, E cell for this. Okay, so I just need to basically match my stuff up. So um, AL's on the wrong side, so I do need to flip that. So I got 2.35, and then um, over here, let's see, I, you can't really look at OH because see how you have OH in both of them? So that's a bad, bad no-no, okay? Um, H2O, however, is only in the second one, and it is on that side, so I just need to keep that the same. And when I add those up, I get um, 1.52 volts. Okay, lastly, I'm asked to calculate the delta G for that particular reaction. So remember, delta G is equal to negative F um, E cell, okay? Um, negative N F E cell, and if I'm looking at my electrons here, okay, so look at the electrons between those. They're going to have to go to six, right? That's going to be the, the the little happy number there, um, 485, not 845, okay, um, all right, Faraday, and then my E cell was 1.52, and then I multiplied, and I got my delta G is equivalent to um, negative 879,943 joules. Okay, very spontaneous reaction. Okay, um, last but not least, we have a student that's passing a direct current. So this is an electrolytic cell. Um, he observes that chlorine gas is produced at the anode. Okay, so I like to immediately make, make notes. Okay, chlorine gas at the anode, and I also know that the anode is where oxidation is occurring. Okay, um, wants us to identify the species produced at the cathode. So we need, to provide, uh, we need to identify who is going to be reduced here. Remember, um, we have these two things to choose from. We want to go with the most positive. So this is what's going to happen here. So we're going to be giving off hydrogen gas at the cathode and producing OH-, making the uh, solution a little bit more basic.